and we are live hello everyone and welcome back to mufasa's daily book reading at noon today we're going to be reading another 10 minutes of our wonderful book written by stephen r colby the eight habits uh we're going to be reading chapter nine and that chapter is titled the voice and speed of trust uh last week we rounded off our reading about trust so if you missed Friday's reading, you will find that reading in a wonderful playlist that we have curated for you on YouTube. So make sure that you have a look at that. The link to our YouTube channel is in today's description of the live. Remember for any coaching inquiries, you will find our email there as well. And yeah, send us any of your inquiries and also leave a comment. Remember to share, subscribe to our YouTube channel and enjoy the content. My 10 minutes is already set. Hello to you watching this right now. And if you're watching this in the replay, do remember to leave a, your hashtag comment there, your hashtag replay comment. Um, we are absolutely thrilled to be interacting with you today and every other day when we post these wonderful lives and as well as the other content that is on our page. Okay, let me read for 10 minutes. My timer is set. The voice and speed of trust. It is a greater compliment to be trusted than to be loved. George MacDonald. When we seek to expand our influence and inspire others to find their voice, remember, inspire means to breathe life into another. We move into the world of relationships. Building strong relationships not only requires a character foundation of inner security, abundance, and personal moral authority, as embodied in the first part of this book, but it also involves stretching ourselves and developing vital new interpersonal skills that will make us equal to the challenges we will face with others. The next two chapters on modeling are focused on developing these skills. Almost all of the work of the world is done through relationships with people and in organizations. But what is communication like when there is no trust? Is it possible? Is it impossible? It is impossible. It's like walking through a minefield. What if your communication is clear and precise, yet there is no trust? You will always be looking for hidden meanings and the hidden agenda. A lack of trust is the very definition of a bad relationship. In the words of my, in the words of my son Stephen, low trust is the great, low trust is the great hidden tax. In fact, this hidden tax is greater than all taxes and interests combined, hidden and unhidden. The speed of trust. Now. What is communication like when there is a high trust? It's easy, it's effortless, it's simultaneous, it's instantaneous. What about when, what about when there's high trust and you make mistakes? They hardly matter. People know you, don't worry about it, I understand. People know you, don't worry about it, I understand. Forget it. I know what you mean. I know you. No technology ever devised can do that. Perhaps in a sense, there is, this is why the heart is more important than the brain. Someone may be brain dead, but if their heart is still pumping, they live on. When your heart is dead, you're dead. As my son Stephen says, there's nothing as fast as the speed of trust. It's faster than anything you can think about. It's faster than the internet. For when trust is present, mistakes are forgiven and forgotten. Trust is the glue of life. It is the glue that holds organizations, cultures, and relationships together. Ironically, it comes from the speed of going slow. With people, fast is slow and slow is fast. Several years ago, I was visiting with a friend who had recently com completed a major business project. I was well acquainted with his work and congratulated him on the tremendous positive impact it was having on the lives of thousands. 
I asked him what he had learned. He said, you know, Stephen, I'm sure I will look back on this two year project as one of the most important contributions of my life. Then pausing, he slightly smiled and with deep feeling continued. But my, but my real learning was that without a unified, close relationship with my wife, it means nothing. Really, I replied, sensing my interest. He then opened up and shared the following experience. When I was first asked to take leadership on this project, I was thrilled with the opportunity. My wife and children were supportive, so I threw myself into it wholeheartedly. I felt a great weight of responsibility and was driven and energized by a sense of purpose. In the second year of the project, project I worked literally day and night. The importance of the work consumed me. I felt I was doing well in staying involved with the kids' lives, including ball games and dance recitals. I usually had dinner each evening with the family. I thought I was managing pretty well. The last six months were the most intense. And it was during this time that I noticed how often my wife was becoming frustrated with me. Usually over the smallest of things, at least they seemed to me. I became increasingly irritated at a lack of understanding and support of the work I was doing, especially at such a critical time. Communication became more strained, even more, even over minor issues. When the project was finally completed, she didn't even want to go to the celebration dinner. She went, but obviously didn't enjoy herself. I knew we had to talk, really talk. So we did, and the floodgates opened. She started to share what it was like to be alone all this time. Even when I was home, she felt I was somewhere else. Because our tradition of having weekly dates became much less frequent and because I usually stayed up long after she retired each night, we didn't talk and share like we used to. And she felt more and more isolated, unappreciated and disconnected. I wasn't communicating much of anything. My nearly, my nearly single-minded focus was on my work and other commitments became a constant reminder of where my thoughts and feeling were not focused. She reminded me that I had even forgotten her birthday until the day was half over. My goodness, that's intense. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't forgetting that was bad. And, as, and it wasn't the forgetting that was bad as it was a symbol of what the whole year had seemed like. When I, asked why, when I asked her why she hadn't opened up and shared her concerns earlier, she said she didn't want to upset me and distract me from my project. I looked in her eyes and saw deep pain and loneliness. I felt horrible. I was amazed and embarrassed that I had been so clueless. Her openness about her loneliness helped me realize how empty I had been for so long. We had both become less effective, both personally and together. I apologized and reassured her that there was no person or thing on the, on the earth more important to me than her. But my words didn't seem to get through. I realized that too many other things had communicated something different for too long. My apology and commitment to reprioritize my life helped, but it didn't make things all better overnight. It took days and weeks and months of constant effort, talking, sharing, being there, making and keeping promises, putting aside work at the end of the day for the family and apologizing and regrouping when I got a little off track. Before the full feeling of trust and emotional connection was restored and exceeded what it has been before. I like that. I like that it, you know, it exceeded what it had been before. Since I visited with my friend, he had completely two more multi-year uh, multi projects just, demand, just as demanding and significant as the first. Yet his relationship with his wife had grown stronger through each one. 
his painful first experience and his increased understanding of and commitment to his wife had brought lasting change. Looking back on the contrast in his experiences, he recently shared these additional insights with me. My real learning was that you could be deeply committed to a marriage, love your spouse, live in, inf live in fidelity and loyalty toward one another, be committed to raising your children and still have your relationship and trust deteriorate. You don't have to speak harsh, unkind words or be disrespectful to hurt someone. With one who is very close to you, all it takes is neglecting the heart, mind, and spirit. Relationships and trust do not remain constant. They are maintained and deepened only as you actively nurture and build them with regular acts of kindness, consideration, appreciation, and service. I learned that both the quality of our marriage and my own happiness had very little to do with what she was doing for me and everything to do with what I was doing was trying to do every day to foster her happiness share her burdens and partner with her in the things we care about most i've learned that unity in my relationship with my wife is one of the greatest enabling sources of power of my life not only in the most significant work in the family and community together but in every area of my life including professionally i create well of it creates a well of strength, peace, joy, belonging, and energy that fuels my best work creatively, creativity, and drive to contribute. Finally, I'm learning that strong relationships require real effort and sacrifice. They require putting someone else's well-being, growth, and happiness before your own. And oh, how it's worth it. For such effort, it is the door to our own happiness what would what what would we do without the pool of such relationships that help us get outside ourselves and become equal to our potential and i think that's beautiful and we're going to end our reading right there i'm just going to reread that last part what would we do without the pool of such relationships that help us get outside of ourselves and become equal to our potential. So I hope that you have gained some wonderful gems in today's reading about trust and you will nourish your relationships all around you in organizations and your families. And I wish you an absolutely amazing week filled with warmth and I'll see you on Wednesday for another 10 minutes daily reading. Goodbye. Before I say bye, I see we have comments. So let me read those. Uh, Ayanda, thank you so much for uh, uh, interacting with us and coming on to read, um, to listen to the reading. I repeat, the playlist is such a wonderful feature for when you want a replay for all the readings. Thank you. Thank you so much. I also agree with you. So definitely um, go into our, uh, you know, our, subs our YouTube page and just go into the playlist. They're absolutely amazing. I'm glad that they talked because I was starting to think that he was shifting the blame to his wife. Yes, the communica communication is key. So true. So true. And building that trust and nourishing your relationship. So do that today. Find a way to do that. And um, we know as we've read now that it definitely pays off and it brings us closer to our true potential. See you on Wednesday. Goodbye.